Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my C Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover if, else, else if, the ternary operator, switch, go to, while, do, while, exception handling, and a whole bunch more. Like always, all the code is available in the description underneath of the video, as well as a transcript for the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so here we are, and I'm sure you're very well aware I'm using Visual Studio here, but you can use Zamarin or whatever you want to use. The very first thing I'm gonna talk about are what are called conditionals, and they just mean that we are going to perform certain operations under certain conditions. Now you are going to have relational operators, and this is how we are going to compare values, which are greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to, equal to, and not equal to. You're also going to be able to use logical operators to combine these two little ways of comparing, and they are going to be and, or, and not. And now what I'm going to do is show you a whole bunch of examples of how those different things are used. Let's say you have an age, which is equal to 17, and you want to decide what grade this person should go into. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the age of this student is going to be greater than or equal to 5, and... If the age is going to be less than or equal to seven, in that situation, what we are going to do is we are going to print out onto our screen a message that's going to say this student should go to elementary school. So we'll say go to elementary school. Yes, I know they should go to kindergarten if they're five, but whatever. Then what we're going to be able to do is make another condition. Here we will say else if, and we're going to be comparing multiple things again. So we're going to say if the age is greater than seven, and both of these have to be true or it's going to come back as false, of course. Age is less than 13. In that situation, let's go and copy this. We are going to say that they need to go to middle school. And there that is. And let's throw in another else if here. We'll say else if. And in this situation, what we're going to do is we're going to say if age is greater than 13 and the age is less than 19, in that situation, we are going to say that they need to go to high school. So let's go throw that in there. Then we're going to have a condition in which none of these are true, and this is like a catch-all for everything, and here we'll say go to college. All right, so there we are. That is else if and if and else and all those other different things and how you can use them. Now let's go and give you another example using or. We're going to use or anytime we want to say that something is okay as long as either of these is true. So here, what we're gonna do is we'll say age is less than 19. In that situation, if either one of those is true, we're going to say that this person, you shouldn't. All right, so that's an example of how we can use or. And let's go and see not as well. So what not does is it basically just takes a true and turns it into a false, or it takes a false and turns it into a true. Oh, and by the way, you can also combine string operators just by going like this and throwing a plus inside of there, trying to cover every way of doing everything, and throw in a closing parentheses. And let's run this just to see what happens, all right? And you can see right here, go to high school, you shouldn't work, and it turned true into false. And I was using right instead of right line, and that's the reason why we we're getting some of those weird things, but either way. I now would like to talk about the ternary operator. And what it's going to do is it's going to assign one value if a condition is true, and otherwise it will assign the second value. So, of course, that's going to be, it doesn't have to be true or false, but it's very often used for true or false statements. So here what we're going to say is if the age is greater than or equal to 16, then we are going to assign a value of true. So if that's true, it's going to assign a value of true to can drive. And otherwise, it's going to assign a value of false. All right, so that's how that works. And then we have the switch statement, which is going to be used whenever you have a limited number of options. And just so you know, there is no way of checking ranges. And that, in my opinion, is a short-sighted thing with C Sharp. I really, really wish that they would make it so that you could use ranges inside of switch statements like you can with Python, for example. 
If you want to check multiple different conditions, you have to stack these cases. So exactly like what I'm doing right here. So what I'm saying here is if the value of age is equal to one or two, in that situation, I am going to print a message out on our screen here. And that message is going to be go to day care. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check, whoop, make sure you throw a break statement inside of here. Let's get rid of that. Throw a break statement inside of here. You must always do that. And that's going to throw us completely out of the switch statement. That's what break does in that situation. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say if the age is three or if the age is four, in that situation, we're going to say go to preschool. So go to preschool. And there that is. And then we can say, we can throw spaces inside of here if we'd like. We could say if the age is five, whoops, make sure you throw a break inside of here, however. I wanna make sure you always throw a break inside of there, otherwise it will get cranky with you. And then we'll say something like go to another school. Go to another school, just uh, end this never ending list of different things like that. And we will say break. Now let's say kindergarten, go to kindergarten, kindergarten. There we are and close off that break statement. And then what we will do by default, if none of those are true, we will say in that situation, go to another school. So go to another school, just to uh, throw something in there. And then something else we can do is use a go to statement. What this is going to do is jump us out of the switch block and to wherever we define our go to. So that's another way of ending this if you don't want to use break. Then what you can do, and go to is a very bad thing to use, and I personally never use it, but just wanted to cover it because you may see somebody else use it. So what it's going to do is jump out of there, jump to where other school exists, and then do whatever is in here. So what we're going to do is we are going to say elementary, middle, and high school. Just to throw something in there. All right, so that is switch and that is go to. And then what will happen is jump out of here and it'll print what is inside of there. And otherwise it will just skip this code all together. Another thing that's important is if you want to compare strings, it is best to use the equals function. So we're going to say, let's define a person's name and let's go and define another name and let's go and let's have them be equal. If you want to check equality between two different strings, you should do something like this. And we'll say name equals and then we're going to throw inside of here the name we want to compare it to. And then you're going to put and define what type of string comparison you are doing. So we're gonna say string comparison, throw this down here, and then specifically ordinal. And that is a way of checking to see if there are equal strings or if these strings are equal. And let's go get rid of that. And we'll just say names are equal. Throw that there, throw that there, and run it. And you're going to see, go to another school is what comes up here because the age was 17. And then it jumps to the go-to, prints out elementary, middle, and high school, and then it says the names are equal. All right. So that is a rundown of conditional statements. And of course, as this tutorial continues, I will do more with them. And now I want to talk about the while loop. All right, so you're basically going to use the while loop in comparison to the for and the for each loop whenever you want to continue execution as long as a condition is true. So let's create a while loop that's going to print out odd numbers between 1 and 10. So we'll go int i is equal to 1. And another thing to know about the while loop is you have to always define the iterator for the while loop outside of the while loop before you define the while loop. So here we're going to say while i is less than or equal to 10. In that situation, we are going to do some things. Now remember, we want to print out odd numbers. One way to do that is to use a mathematical operator called modulus, which is a percent sign. And what modulus does is it returns the remainder of a division. So if we want to find out if something is an odd number, what we're going to do, one thing we can do here is we can do modulus 2. And we know that if this is equal to zero, 
Well, that means this is an even number. So in that situation, we are going to increment the value of i, and this is exactly the same as if we would say i is equal to i plus one, and then what we're going to do is we want to jump back to the beginning of the while loop and start execution over again. And to do that, we we'll use continue. All right, so this is gonna say, if it is an even number, we wanna increment it to the next number, which is gonna be odd, and then we wanna jump back up here and start executing again. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you the break statement again. Remember the break statement jumps us out of loops. So let's say we decide that we want to break out of here if i is equal to nine. So we can do something like i is equal to nine, and then we could just throw the break statement right here since it is going to be, you know, just one thing is going to occur after this if statement. Then what we're gonna be able to do is jump in here and then we will print the value of i out on the screen. Well, let's get rid of that quote. So we'll just do that like this. And then what we can do is we have to remember to increment the value of i. All right, so if we do that and we run it, you're gonna see that it prints only the odd numbers and it doesn't print nine, all right? So pretty cool stuff with the while loop. And of course, we'll be doing much more with the while loop as the tutorial continues, because I really like while loops. Doesn't take much to get me excited, obviously. So now we're gonna jump in here and talk about the do while loop. Now you're gonna use the do while loop whenever you want to make sure that you execute the code inside of your block at least once. So what I'm gonna do here is show you how to generate a random number. So we're gonna say random, and I'm gonna call this rand is equal to new random, create a random object. And then what we can do is we can say something like secrets, number is going to be equal to and we want to generate random numbers between 1 and 10 to do that you go 1 and 11 and throw that like that and then we're going to come in here and we're going to have like a number guessing game so we'll say guest is equal to zero and then we will start our do while loop so we're going to say do and then we will have all the things that we want to have it do. So we'll say console writes, and if I'm moving too fast, of course, hit the pause button. Here I'm gonna say, enter a number between one and 10, and we're gonna make this be a write so that we'll have room to put it in there. And then after that, we want to get the number that they typed in. So we're gonna type in number guest, is gonna be equal to, and also we wanna convert the number that's passed in, which is gonna be a string by default, into an integer. And another way of doing that is by using convert. I've showed you three different ways to convert into multiple different numbers or, or data types, and this is just another one of those. So we will say console and read line like that and we will get that and store it into number guest. Now what we can do down here is after the curly bracket, we can say wow and put our condition inside of here. So we're gonna continue looping as long as the secret number is not equal to the number guest. And there that is, and make sure you put the semicolon there. That is a very, very, very common error and now you will not make it. And if you're wondering if there are any other ways of converting, yes, indeed. Here are other conversion options. You can use two Boolean instead of two int 32. Int 32 is a regular integer. Two int 64 is a long, by the way. So you have two Boolean, two byte, two character, two decimal, two double, two int 64, which is exactly the same as long. Two string, of course, you've seen that before. And they are all going to convert from any type into any other type. Right, so useful way to do conversions between different data types. And if we run it, we just created a game, enter a number between one and 10, can I get it the first time? Let's say seven, no, it was wrong. Let's try one, nope, two, nope, three, or four, I guess I hit, and four was the number, all right? And it would have been a better game if it would have told me, I guess, the number, but I forgot to type that in, and that's not a big deal. And now what we're going to do is talk briefly about exception handling because I have a little bit more time to go. Now, basically, we use exception handling to catch errors that could potentially crash our program. What is an example of an error like that? Well, let's say we have num1 is equal to 5 and we have another double, which is going to be num2, which is going to be equal to 0. What I'm going to do here is try to divide by 0. 
Actually, C sharp does not throw an exception in this situation. So what I'm going to do, because I know it can't be done, I am going to throw an exception. So I'm going to create my own static uh, function down here. It is going to return a double, and I'm going to call it do division. And it is going to receive a double, and we will call this x. And it's going to receive another double that we will call y. And it's going to try to perform this division right here. So what I'm going to do is I know ahead of time that you can't divide by zero. So I'm going to come in here and say if the value of y is equal to zero, well then I want to throw an error. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'll do something a little bit more complicated. And the error that I want to call here is division by error exception. So I want to say, hey, you can't do that. And you have to put the parentheses on it right there. And then what I'm going to do is otherwise, if they do not send a value of zero, I'm going to say, OK, I can do that division and return the answer. OK, so now up inside of here, I know that there's the potential for an error to occur whenever this function is called. So how am I going to handle it? Well, I'm going to surround any code that could potentially cause an error with what's called a try block. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console and write line. And I will say five divided by zero is equal to, and then I will go do whatever I'm gonna do here, jump down to the next line, and then I will call my do division function. And then I will pass in num one and num two, knowing that it's going to cause an error. And then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to catch that error to keep the program from crashing. And the specific error I'm gonna catch is the divide by zero exception. So I'm gonna come in here. So if that error is triggered, I am going to catch it and I'm gonna do something with it. What I'd like to do, let's go and copy this, is print out some information. And so let's just keep it simple. And we'll say something like, you can't divide by zero. There's that error. And that's gonna print out. And otherwise, if I didn't have that, it would crash the whole entire program. So that's why I'm gonna keep it that way. Then you can also go and print out additional information to the screen by referencing functions available in this EX variable up here. And one of them is, let's just go and print the error message. We can say git type and we can go name. And this is going to give us the type of exception that occurred. And let's go and also print out the message associated with that. And to do that, we just type in message like that. And that's going to give us the error message. Another thing, if you would just come in here and just type in exception like this with EX, that is going to be a catch all that is going to catch every single exception that is ever triggered. And we'll get more into that later on. But I just want to talk, well, let's just do it. So we could come in here, even though this isn't going to be triggered, we can say exception EX. And then you can call this anything. It doesn't have to be called EX. And in this situation, we'll just go and print out exactly the same type of stuff. So we'll just copy this and we will paste it in there. And we'll say something simple like, because we don't know what error occurred, we'll just say an error occurred. And there we are. So there is that guy that's gonna be called if the exception isn't caught by specifically naming exception like we have right here. And then you can also use another function or another block here called the finally block. And it is always going to run, uh, it's always going to run and it's gonna provide for cleanup after you handle all these exceptions. So we'll go in here and we'll do something like this and we'll just type in cleaning up. Whenever we get into files and other stuff, I'll do more with exception handling. And if we run this guy, we are going to see that it says you can't divide by zero. It prints out the actual exception and it prints out the message for the exception, which is attempted to divide by zero and then cleaning up shows up here from the finally block. All right, so there is a rundown of some conditionals and some additional looping structures we haven't covered and a brief introductory uh, situation in which we covered exception handling. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.